Welcome to Green Time. I'm host Don Fitz. This episode is going to be about a light bulb went on in my head. Before we have our discussion, let's take a look at a great movie that Bill Crackler made. First, cavemen discovered fire. While natural, as a light source, fire is harmful to our health. It pollutes the air, increases deforestation, which contributes to global warming, erosion, and other related environmental issues. And directly, fire presents a burn hazard for property and people. Humanity sought a cleaner alternative. In 1844, the first incandescent light bulb was created in a laboratory though it wasn't widely adopted until the 1880s when electricity was more widely distributed. The modern incandescent light bulb was created around 1911. In the 1940s, fluorescent light bulbs became common in factories. It wasn't until 1980 that the CFL, or Compact Fluorescent Light Bulb, was created. The first LEDs were generated in the 1960s, though they weren't very good for room lighting until now. The Nonprofit First focuses on developing a passion for science, technology, engineering, and math among 6 to 18 year olds through challenging robotics competitions. As a funding initiative, First partnered with Google and an LED manufacturer to reduce the cost of LED light bulbs. At least half of the bulb cost goes to supporting youth, science, and technology education projects. Sunlight is the summation of many different wavelengths of light. Each wavelength is perceived as a unique color, blue around 475 nanometers, green between 510 and 560 nanometers, red around 650 nanometers. The eye's sensitivity to light varies with wavelength. While the specific response is unique to an individual, the photopic curve shown is the average response across the population. The photopic curve clearly shows that human eyes are most sensitive to green light. Using that great science lesson, we're going to examine how the eye will respond to three light bulb types. Shown are an LED, a CFL, and an incandescent light bulb. If we measure the wavelengths generated by each light source in absolute power terms, we get this graph. The 90 watt incandescent clearly produces the most light, but as we made clear in later slides, most of this light is generated outside the range of wavelengths visible to the human eye. If we normalize the bulb spectra to their individual maximum values, so all plots share the same data range, it is easier to compare the bulb spectral content. The LED, unlike the CFL, has a smooth spectrum, which closely matches the wavelengths our eyes respond to, without wasting too much light where we can't see. The 90 watt incandescent slowly increases the power of its light as the wavelength increases in length. When the normalized curves are multiplied with the eye's response, it becomes clear that all the higher energy light of wavelength greater than 700 nanometers produced by the incandescent is wasted energy. The LED, on the other hand, closely matches the eye's response, and little energy was lost to unseen light. In fact, so little light is wasted by the 7 watt LED that its output is roughly equivalent to a 40 watt incandescent. Now that we've determined that the LED should be more efficient, what does its light look like? First, we'll show the ancient reading lamp standard, a candle. Note the dim light and shallow illumination of the nearby wall. Next, while inefficient, the incandescent is the common gold standard for indoor lighting. It is a bright golden color with omnidirectional output. The CFL is much, much dimmer and does not project as much toward the socket as the incandescent. The LED's brightness is marginally less than the incandescent, but remember, it's using 12% as much energy and has a more uniform light pattern than the CFL. Using Missouri's 2011 9.7 cents per kilowatt hour electric rate, in expected bulb lifetimes, the LED life cycle cost was estimated roughly to be $25.83.
while the same analysis found the incandescent bulb or set of bulbs would cost sixty two dollars and forty four cents nearly forty dollars more further the incandescent's extra energy use leads to twenty eight additional kilograms of coal being burned each year over its lifetime the incandescent burns 264 more kilograms of coal, contributing 509 additional kilograms of carbon dioxide to the atmosphere. Even when the production energy costs are included, the LED's equivalent power use was 280 kilowatt hours, the CFL 320 kilowatt hours, and the equivalent power use of an incandescent was a whopping 1500 kilowatt hours. LED bulbs have a longer lifetime use less energy, have a lower carbon footprint, and a lower life cycle cost. They are instant on, and while most are not currently dimmable, unlike CFLs, they contain no toxic mercury. As an added bonus, the shell is plastic, so they won't shatter if dropped. What are you waiting for? Begin replacing your dead lights with LEDs today. LED light bulbs are the clear green alternative for the future. Welcome back to Green Time. I'm host Don Fitz. We just looked at a DVD made by Bill Kreckler. With me in the studio, I have Gavin Perry with Show Me Solar. Gavin, I'm really glad, I'm glad to have you. Thanks, Don. And you know a little bit about light. Oh, a little bit. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> now, and now tell me, um, when, when you looked at the DVD that, that the viewers just saw, was there anything in particular that stood out in your mind? I mean, did you think that Bill got, got the ideas right about light? You know, it's interesting. I, I have a, a talk that I do that's much longer than we'll have time for. Uh, and so I'm really glad he covered a lot of that material, the history of light. And I always like to go back to the caveman and, and, and the fire and sunlight. Those are the original two lights that we had. And then it takes a very long time from, you know, 100,000 years ago inventing fire to having some kind of light that uh, in a lamp that's other than yeah, it's fire. Am, it's amazing that the first step took hundreds of thousands of years and the next steps, you know, you measure in and then centuries gets, or decades. And or, then the next one in, in, in minutes, it seems yeah. like, you know, in, in years. So if we go through that, you know, after we get to kerosene, whale oil was a huge uh, um, industry for uh, lamp lighting because mm -hmm. of its low smoke. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, when you're using fire for your light, you got, you know, smoke issues and so on, and, and certainly a lot of heat for the amount of light you get. So it was very, not very energy efficient. Uh, and the electric light bulb was a great uh, invention. Not Thomas Edison's invention, but mm -hmm. still a good invention. Um, by the 1880s, uh, people started having electric lights. Um, and they improved somewhat over the century that the uh, incandescent light, that's the, your typical light bulb that we're used to. And that was, the, that was a huge thing yeah. in world history, was getting electricity and of course a lot yeah. of people in the world just, still just, don't still don't have electricity that's right. but that's fa fabulous in order to to have it but once you had electricity and you could have a light that didn't let out you know off smoke and, yeah. and noxious fumes that was a great thing and you could basically get about um, 10 lumens per watt. So I should talk about what that means. Wait just a second, let me ask you a question. I want to sure. know if I'm the only one in the world who's weird. Okay, do you, do you ever walk around at night and turn on a light going down, down the steps and think, you know, 200 years ago, I wouldn't have been able to flip on a light switch to, to just walk down the steps? You know, I don't, don't often think of that. <laughs> well, then, then, I, guess I don't I think just, it's that weird. I, you know, of course, but, when I'm out but, camping. But is, oh, yeah, when you're camping, thinking, you think. Boy, I wish I'd brought my LED flashlight. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, now, now what, I just interrupted you. So, so what oh, were you? So, I was going to start to talk about um, how we measure power and light. Mm -hmm. Because, uh, I mean, when you want to talk about energy efficiency, what we're really talking about is, you know, how many watts of power are burned, right? right? Um, and we're used to thinking of th light bulbs as a 60 watt bulb or a 40 watt bulb. And because we're so used to that, um, a lot of times they're now sold as 60 watt equivalent. Yes, that's all of right? my... Um, but it's, we're moving towards using the actual number because a 60 watt bulb could have anywhere between, say, 500 lumens to mm. 1,000. Uh, it, there's a, quite a variation of the efficiency even of a 60 watt uh, mm -hmm. light bulb. You know, the soft white, the, the color that it is varies mm -hmm. somewhat. If it's a halogen, uh, you'll get more light out of the same 60 watts. They're slightly more efficient, tend to mm -hmm. be up to 20% more efficient than the standard incandescent bulbs. Mm -hmm. um, but LEDs revolutionized all of that and are much more efficient. So you look at 
10 lumens. A and, lumen and is so like not, a, most, most people do not have LEDs in their homes yet. Not they, yet. Okay. I do. But, okay. And, and more and more people do, and they're getting mm. really cheap. So mm. it, it's basically what's expected to be the standard light bulb over the next mm. coming years. Mm. I guess that's why we're talking about them here, mm. right. because it introduced this new technology that's mm. just uh, sweeping the world. Uh, so if you think of a candle, one, one candle, that will produce uh, a lumen when, on a target that's uh, one meter away, or a foot that's candle. That's what a, a lumen means. A lumen is like the metric version of a foot candle. Okay. So if you take a candle and, and one foot away, you put a, a target and you look how bright it is there and how much light comes per mm. square foot, okay. that would be a foot candle. A lumen is uh, that same one candle, but at a, a one meter away, how far one three square meter. Three inches more. <laughs> so it's a little farther away, and so it's, okay. it's, it's, it's more light. Mm. So um, it's actually less bright because it's farther back. Okay. <laughs> but anyway, so we call, talk about the lumens. That's the light output from mm. uh, the, the light source. So you have a light bulb, and a typical 60-watt bulb, 850 lumens. You know, that's the kind of range that you're in. So... Um, when you look at LED lights, the lumen output can vary tremendously, and they've gotten brighter and brighter over the years. So mm -hmm. while the incandescent in, in 100 years went from maybe 10 to up to 20 lumens per uh, watt yes. of power, the uh, LED didn't even exist until 1964. And at that point, it's just this tiny little red thing that barely glowed, mm -hmm. and it's like if it was dim enough, you could use it. It was about equivalent to those little neon indicator lights. So, ooh, you know, it uses less power. Mm -hmm. This is great. You know, we can put them in a panel. Monsanto is actually one of the original inventors of the, the LED. So, um, just like computers over the last, um, same about 50 years, doubled in uh, their power, speed, and so on, and costs would fall in half mm -hmm. every two years. It turned out every 18 months, mm -hmm. but I'm pretty close to that. LEDs have done the same thing. The LED brightness has doubled every two years. So it's, it's growing incredibly fast. Growing efficient. incredibly fast because it doubles and doubles and doubles and doubles. But there's going to be a limit to that, isn't there? There is I mean, a limit. Most, most technologies, they do really well the first few years in terms of increasing and efficiency. And then it levels off. Then it levels off. Okay. There is a theoretical limit, and then there's a practical limit. Right. Yeah. So um, the theoretical limit would be if you made just green light. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's what Bill talks about in, in, and, in the movie, is that green yet, light's the most efficient. And, and so therefore, if you have a, just a green light, you can have 783 lumens okay. uh, up from one watt. Mm -hmm. That's you know, huge. But in practice, you, you're not interested in green lights. I mean, you can have one yellow light. Your sodium mm -hmm. lights, those orange, horrible orange lights where you're looking mm -hmm. for your green car and there's mm -hmm. this dark bluish thing. And, and we, that we, my car? we prefer not to use those if we yeah, can get we away really from them. Don't, it's, called color rendering index. Their color rendering is zero. Yeah. <laughs> but they're pretty efficient. They're almost 200 lumens per watt, 180 yeah. approximately. Okay.